Hi, this is Karen White of Divine Time Astrology, and this video is about Byron Katie. I'll show you how her work, called the work, shows up in her birth chart. If you have the moon with or aspected by Mars, or if Mars is your Atmakarika, your self-producer planet, your essence planet, the work of Byron Katie is especially helpful to you. Several clients that I've recommended her work to have written to tell me how much her work has helped them in their relationships. I've been listening and watching her videos on YouTube today, probably because Mars is in the sign of Aries and is transiting through my fourth house of emotional happiness. She's fun to watch, especially when she works with people on their relationships. I've put some links below this video of some of her relationship videos. I don't have her birth time, but that's okay because I'm just going to work with her Atmakarika planet and the planets with and aspecting it. That is all we need to see who she is, her essence, and why the work she brings to the world is what it is. So here we see here the moon is the Atmakarika self-producer planet and she has it here in the sign of Scorpio with Mars in the sign of Scorpio. So Mars is in his own sign here. Now the moon speaks sweet words of encouragement and you can hear her do that throughout every session that she has with someone. The moon is also the ego, the mind, and the imagination. She constantly refers to the mind, our thoughts, and the ego. The unquestioned thoughts we think create a movie that we're watching all the time. And it's not based on in reality most of the time. Attachment to our ideas and thoughts about how things and people should or shouldn't be is the cause of anger and suffering when Mars is with or aspecting the moon. And that's her story. If you read about her story or you watch her talk about her story, she suffered greatly, and the people around her did too, before she learned to question what she was thinking and the truth of what she was thinking. Now, Mars is a planet that can be um, very aggressive and, uh, and, and full of anger, and that's the way she was. She bullied her husband into getting what she wanted, the way she wanted it. And she basically was a rageaholic. She raged at the people close to her. And uh, her family and even her children became afraid of her. So if you just go online, like you can Google her, you can Google Byron Katie's story and read about her awakening experience. And before she became a, a teacher of the work, she was in real estate. And she made quite a lot of money in real estate, too. So Mars rules real estate. And Jupiter is aspecting Mars and the moon here. And they're both in good condition. Mars is in his own sign, where he's powerful. And Jupiter is in his sign of exaltation, as well as it being retrograde, which adds extra strength to it also, because it means it's transiting between the Earth and the Sun, so it's closer to the Earth. So Jupiter-Mars combinations are wealth combinations. And she and both of uh, two of her husbands bought real estate, fixed them up, and resold them. And she made quite a lot of money doing that. However, being wealthy uh, didn't make her happy at all. And she, that's when she, she got married the second time and she descended into a really deep, dark depression. And it was while she was in this depression that she had her awakening experience. And I looked it up to see when that was. And interestingly, it was during her K2 time period. And K2 is associated with awakening, uh, spiritual development, spiritual enlightenment, with um, also with um, liberation, 
spiritual liberation. And freedom is one of the things that she talks about a lot. Freedom and peace. Now, Mars is also the will. And when the will is applied inappropriately, when it's applied to things that are not your business, basically, is what it comes down to, and you use your will in order to try to get other people to be differently, to act differently than they are, this is typically where uh, an inappropriate use of Mars. And interestingly, the enlightenment path for Mars is to become innocent-minded, which is just another way of saying loving things the way they actually are. Loving reality as it is. Loving people the way that they are. And this is actually how you can change something. But it begins with the self, of course. And interesting, too, she talks a lot about loving what is. She even has a book titled Loving What Is. It's so fascinating to see how this shows up in people's charts. Their Atmakarika and the planets with the Atmakarika and how that informs their life and the way they think and what they do. One of the reasons why Mars can cause so much unhappiness when it's with the moon or it's the Atmakarika, or it's ruled by Mars, the Atmakarika is ruled by Mars, aspected by Mars, with Mars, or Mars is prominent in the chart in some way, is because Mars looks up. He is idealistic. He has very clear ideas in his mind. He is very opinionated about the way things should and shouldn't be, and he loves to fix things, improve things, and kill evils. So he's described as roaming to and fro with torn form and red eyes. So he's always looking for things to fix, things to improve, and evils to kill. So you can imagine you use this kind of energy, this kind of power inappropriately, and it can wreak all kinds of havoc in your life, especially in your relationships. Because when you train this Mars on your partner and you want to fix him or her and improve them or her and try to get rid of their faults, <laughs> which would be the killing evils part, well, you can see how this would not be a recipe for relationship happiness. Okay, so anyway, back to Harat Makarika and the planet aspecting it. Jupiter is exalted in Cancer and is aspecting the Moon, the Atmakarka Moon, and Mars. Now Jupiter is a planet that looks all around. And he looks all around and brings perspective through wisdom, philosophy, and spirituality. Now because Jupiter is aspecting the Moon, she is, was able and is able to see a different way from a different perspective, a different way to use her Mars. And this is one of the things that you see her do when she's working with people on um, following the work. The Moon-Jupiter-Mars theme is repeated again here in the Namamsha. Her Mars is in the sign of Aquarius here, and it's with Jupiter and the Moon. And it's not aspected by anything else, at least not in Jaimini aspects it isn't. The sign of Aquarius has to do with individuation, becoming an, uh, an individual, accepting yourself, all your flaws, and everything about you that's like everyone else on Earth, and that which is different than everyone else. You know, I guess you would call your weirdnesses or your quirks. And it's really interesting because this is something that she's doing. She's actually doing this while she is doing the work. She's accepting herself exactly the way she is. She is loving herself as she is. She's loving everyone else, humanity, 
she is a humanitarian as well, which is another thing that Aquarius is about. And she's bringing her message to the people, to everyone. It's not just for, you know, the special few. It's for everyone. Everyone who, who wants it, that is. Now, Mars, Mars is logic. And Katie uses logic in the most interesting way when questioning her thoughts and in guiding others in questioning their thoughts. No doubt, this is why Mars is one of the planets of conscious, consciousness. Mars is also a planet that helps us to do hard things, to exert ourselves, to fight for the life that we want. Katie often says that she calls the practice of questioning your thoughts the work for a reason. And it's because it requires writing down the thought and thinking about it, questioning it, applying the method she teaches until the truth becomes clear and mental peace is attained. In other words, it's work. Now, <clears throat> she helps, she also herself works really hard. I mean, she, the fact that she was in real estate and fixed up homes and then sold them again means that she's a person who's able to do really hard work. And uh, I can, I mean, I'm amazed when I watch her uh, just work with one person after the next, after the next, after the next, and she does it all in, I don't know, like maybe five or more people in the space of an hour without seeming to get tired. She's patient. Um, she's encouraging. She has a great sense of humor. And she, you know, do, you listen to her and watch her work. It's hard to believe that she was ever mentally ill. But she was. At one time, she was very mentally ill. So I highly recommend her work. Um, Loving What Is, another book that's great for relationships is I Need Your Love. Is that true? <laughs> that's a good one. And then you can just watch her on YouTube. She's quite fascinating to watch. So that's all I wanted to talk about tonight. And if you would like to uh, get a consultation where we look at Mars in your chart to see if Mars is helping you to fight for the life that you want, or if Mars is aspecting your moon and in what way it may be interfering with your happiness, then just go to, to Divine Time Astrology and look under the services tab or you can just email me directly karen at divinetimeastrology.com thank you for watching good night until next time